ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Pueblo County High School Sports Awards. Brought to you by the Pueblo Chieftain. In partnership with Black Hills Energy and St. Mary Corwin Hospital at Centura Health. I have very high expectations for myself. Every day I am taught and trained to look like I am not putting any effort in. Sometimes the hardest thing is to not judge yourself too much. If I had to give a younger version of myself any advice, I'd tell her, dream big, and don't let anyone tell you that you can't. Talent will always be found. It doesn't matter where you play uh, or, or where you're from. Uh, when you have talent, people will find you. Some of the biggest names in the world of sports come together to honor the best high school athletes in the country. Alex Morgan, Katie Ledecky, Aaron Rodgers, Sue Bird, Shaquille O'Neal. Now do you know my name? Yeah, you know, well, you know, do you know my name? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Fire, fire, fury, fury, power, power. My name is, my name is, uh, legend. It's a celebration of athletic excellence from those who know it best. Here are your hosts, Heisman Trophy winner and ESPN analyst Desmond Howard and the host of NFL Live and SEC Nation, Laura Rutledge. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to the show. Tonight we get to celebrate one of the most passionate and exciting groups in all of sports, the high school athlete. That's right, Laura. An incredible list of all-star talent has signed on to help recognize these amazing men and women. We're talking Aaron Rodgers, Alex Morgan, Chipper Jones, Sue Bird, Katie Ledecky, and the big man himself, Shaquille O'Deal. <laughs> I love it. You know, I actually think it's illegal these days to have a sports award without Shaq in it. I think you're right. So I'm glad he's on board for our show tonight. Of course, and the Diesel has something in common with everyone else on this show. At one point or another, we all went to high school. True, and while the time since high school has been a while, uh, for some more than others, <laughs> we all still remember the hopes and dreams and even the challenges of that memorable time in our lives. And tonight we all return to high school to cover a lot of sports and give out a lot of awards. If two people showed up to cheer for it and those two people were your parents, we're celebrating it tonight. So ditch the backpacks and summer reading lists and forget about that pop quiz you bombed in third period French last <laughs> semester. It's time to celebrate some of the best high school athletes in the area. Of course, none of this will be possible without the generous support of our sponsors. And you can't have a celebration this big without a little flexing going on. That's why we have sports broadcaster Abby Labar keeping an eye on the land of the humble brag. Thanks, Laura. And speaking of bragging, we know you love to, and we love to see it. So tag us in your social posts, share photos and videos from your own celebrations using tonight's hashtag. Posts on Instagram or Twitter will be shown on the social media feed on the show website. Okay, so we know every award show needs a red carpet. And lucky for us, two former college football players agreed to host ours tonight. If you don't know them as football players, well, you probably know them better from another little gig they had. The Bachelorette and The Bachelor, my friends, Tyler Cameron and Matt James. Thanks, Abby. Matt and I are so excited to be here. We got out, got dressed up, and stepped into our freshest kicks to walk the red carpet. Wait, are those my shoes? Bro, you put them in my closet. I'm wearing them now. Tonight we get a chance to salute some show out high school athletes. So who's handing out the roses? I'm in the awards tonight. Mm. Careful now. We talked about this and we let that go. We were playing sports long before our bachelor days, so we know how exciting this must be for you. But tonight's not about us. It's about the athletes of today. 
the records they're breaking, the bars they're raising, and the names we'll be reading and remembering in the future. So whether or not you win tonight, just know you've already proven to be a top athlete. So congratulations, this red carpet is all for you. Thanks, guys. I don't know about you, Desmond, but I'm ready to start giving these kids some of their hard-earned awards. Hey, let's do it. We're going to kick things off in the pool. Here to help us dive right in is one of the most decorated female swimmers in U.S. history, the legendary Katie Ledecky. Katie Ledecky burst on the competitive swimming scene at 15 years old. At the London Olympics, she took home the gold and the first of many Olympic medals. She's added four more golds, 15 world championships, two NCAA titles, and a whole bunch of freestyle world records. The recent Stanford grad is back in the pool, training for Tokyo. Hey everybody, Katie Ledecky talking to all you swimmers and divers out there. I know a lot of the world puts us all together in one big group because we spend half of our time in the pool and the other half of the time trying to get chlorine out of our hair. But we are a very diverse group. Divers launch themselves off of boards and platforms of varying heights and swimmers employ a bunch of different strokes and distances, each with its own unique demands. That's why I'm here so I can speak to all of you individuals and tell you the key to success in your water world is to always, always, always keep moving forward. Except, of course, anyone who competes in backstroke or performs back dives. That advice would be very bad for you. You guys keep going backward. That sounded weird. I'm gonna go back in the pool. I'll leave all you divers to your diving and your backstrokers to your backstroking. I'll see you later. Here are the honorees for the Female Swimming and Diving Athlete of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Pueblo County Female Swimming and Diving Athlete of the Year is Candy Liberato of Pueblo County High School. Candy Liberato nabbed a podium finish on the biggest stage of the season. The talented senior competed in four events at the Class 3A state championship meet, highlighted by a third place finish in the 200 individual medley and a tie for fourth in the 100 meter backstroke. Also participating in a pair of relay events, she led the Hornets to a top five team finish overall. Congratulations, Candy. Here are the honorees for the male swimming and diving athlete of the year. And the finalists are... And the Pueblo County Male Swimming and Diving Athlete of the Year is Garrett Dileski of Pueblo County High School. Pueblo County High School's Garrett Dileski had a standout year in the pool for the Hornets. The junior swimmer began the year recording top times in the South Central League for both the 50-meter freestyle and 100-meter freestyle. Dileski was also one of the area's top competitors in the 200 individual medley and 500 meter freestyle events. Congratulations. If you had to name the sport that most pro athletes choose to play when they're not at their paying gig, it would have to be golf. It doesn't mean they're good at it, <laughs> but it doesn't mean they're as bad as Charles Barkley either. But we decided to tap someone who makes their living driving for show and putting for dough. Here's Ryan Palmer with the Golf Awards. Four-time champion Ryan Palmer is no stranger to success. On the PGA Tour, where every week is a battle of attrition, he's taken home four tour victories, 11 runners up, 67 top 10 finishes, including two in the majors. Hey, all you golfers out there. PGA Tour winner Ryan Palmer here to hand out the golf awards. But before I do, I want to point out something about golf compared to other sports. Listen, I get it. There's no buzzer beating golf. No one is throwing the ball 100 miles an hour at you, and no one is going to smash into you at the top of your swing and throw you to the ground. That's all true. But there's something awesome about golf, 
that you can't find in a lot of other sports. If you've got a couple of hours to spare, you can play on the same courses that Tiger, Phil, myself, Annika and Indy, or even Rory and DJ play on. Try shooting hoops with your friends at Madison Square Garden. Or play nine innings at the friendly confines of Wrigley Field. Let's hear it for the game of golf, where legendary venues are open to all. Here are your honorees for the female golfer of the year. And the finalists are And the Pueblo County Female Golf of the Year is Zoe Rodriguez of Pueblo South High School. Zoe Rodriguez of Pueblo South High School missed last year due to COVID-19, but the Colts standout came into our senior season with her focus again on the Class 4A state championship. She finished tied for 11th in the state tournament as a sophomore, garnering second team All-State honors. Rodriguez opened the year by winning the medalist title at the Lady Cyclones Invitational in early May. Congratulations, Zoe. Here are your honorees for the male golfer of the year. And the finalists are... And the Pueblo County Mel Golf of the Year is... Noah Wagner of Pueblo West High School. Noah Wagner finished the season as the medalist winner for the South Central League. He also posted a top 20 finish at the Colorado State Championship Tournament when he finished 18th. A two-time All-State selection, Wagner will be one to watch on the links over the next two years. Congratulations, Noah. Carrie Walsh Jennings here. Stick around. Volleyball's coming up soon. Are you guys hungry? Yeah. All right, let's get some apps. Let's do it. It's as easy as that. Let us refill for you. Hey, you go, guys. Wow, that was so fast. Thank you Enjoy. so much. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Hey, I'll be right back. No one likes waiting in long lines or missing the big moments. Did I miss anything? No. That was quick. I know, right? Do you want a beer? Yeah. We're making it easier for you to get back to what you love without missing a single minute. Refill. Did I miss anything? A lot of sports have similar concepts and equipment, boundaries, balls, and scoreboards, name a few. But there are two that make use of sand. One is golf, where it's to be avoided, and the other is beach volleyball, where it's embraced in all its gritty glory. Here to lend a hand with our volleyball awards is someone who knows achieving greatness is no day at the beach, Carrie Walsh Jennings. Carrie Walsh Jennings, also known as Six Feet of Sunshine, is covered in Olympic gold. The 42-year-old SoCal standout is the most decorated beach volleyball player in Olympic history. She and her former teammate Misty May Trainer won three gold medals and five world championships, earning the title the greatest beach volleyball team of all time. Hey everybody. Carrie Walsh Jennings here. I know this looks like a volleyball, but in reality, it's a ticket to your future because the lessons you learn hitting this sucker around will come in handy down the road. Things like teamwork, determination, goal setting. You're going to need all of those skills. And then there are other friends you make with this, ones you'll have for the rest of your life, priceless. So don't think of it as just a volleyball. Think of it as your secret weapon for success. Here are your honorees for the Female Volleyball Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Pueblo County Female Volleyball Player of the Year is... Bella Adams of Pueblo West High School. 
Bella Adams spearheaded a Pueblo West High School season that was one of the best in school history. The junior middle blocker was named the South Central League's most valuable player for her contributions to the league champion Cyclones, whose expected postseason run was cut short before the Class 5A regionals due to COVID-19. Adams led the SCL with 187 kills while adding 21 service aces and 29 digs. Congratulations, Bella. And now for the guys. Here are your finalists for the Male Volleyball Player of the Year. And the Male Volleyball Player of the Year for Pueblo County is... Jordan Ritgers of Pueblo South High School. The junior libero led the Colts in several statistical categories as South got out to a winning record in Pike Peaks League play. Ritgers racked up nearly 170 digs to go with 200 service aces and 11 kills. Congratulations. Good evening. My name is Vance Crocker. I'm the Vice President for Black Hills Energy here in Colorado. I am so happy to be with all of you tonight, with the students, your families, to celebrate each of your accomplishments. High school sports are such an important part of our community, and Black Hills Energy is proud to sponsor the I Am Sport Award. Our values at Black Hills Energy include leadership, respect, integrity. On and off the field or the court, I know all of you embody and continually strive to become better every single day. Tonight's event demonstrates the pride we all feel about our community and celebrates the successes in Pueblo. I'm honored to have the opportunity to help recognize and celebrate you, the young men and women across our community who have contributed so much of your time and talent to high school athletics. You have most certainly earned the awards being announced tonight, and we at Black Hills Energy are proud to honor your achievement. Thank you and enjoy your evening. Not all of our awards are sports specific. There are a few that draw their list of exceptional candidates from across the athletic spectrum. The first of those is our I Am Sport Award. This award spotlights student athletes who have taken the leadership role outside of competition, volunteering their help to improve their communities. And to present it, we have the truly amazing athlete and mental health advocate, Imani McGee Stafford. Imani was selected 10th overall in the 2016 WNBA draft by the Chicago Sky. But while she was a student at the University of Texas, she shared her very personal story. From the ages of eight to 12, Imani was abused by a relative. That trauma led her to attempt to take her own life multiple times. Like so many others carrying painful secrets, she thought she was the only one. But through counseling and writing, she changed her life. Imani has stepped away from professional sports to pursue a law degree, but nothing has stopped her from speaking out against the stigma long associated with those in need of mental health services. Her bravery has helped so many people she's never met, much like the nominees of the I Am Sport Award who share her passion for helping others. Here she is, Imani McGee Stafford. The Black Hills Energy I Am Sport Award. Hey, all you athletes out there, guess what? We all have something in common. When we practice, we get to see very clearly the fruits of our labor. Doesn't matter if it's measured in inches or seconds, pounds or points, velocity or victories, we can clearly see how we are improving. But there are so many people out there who have a hard time seeing any improvement in their day-to-day -day lives. Just like we are helped by coaches, teachers, teammates, and family to reach our potential in our sport, we need to help others reach their potential in life. And I am proud to see that so many of you are out there doing just that. The I Am Sport Award is our way to say thank you for all of your efforts. You are showing that high school athletes can give more to their communities than their signature win over a rival team. They can give hope. Here are your honorees. Here are your finalists. And the Iron Sport Award goes to Richie Palomar of Pueblo County High School. Richie Palomar is dedicated to helping his community in the realm of wrestling by helping teach future athletes to have fun. He volunteers his spare time to help boys and girls in the community at wrestling practices and tournaments. 
Richie is dedicated not only to his personal successes, but helping future generation of athletes understand the joy and pleasure he too competes with. He is the definition of sport by his dedication to his team and his selfless acts of bettering others around him. Richie always finds ways to help out younger athletes throughout his community in his spare time. Congrats, Richie. There are some athletes today who have been so dominant, you only have to say their first name for everyone to know who you're talking about. They become celebrities, giants of their sport. That's right. Our next presenter was an athlete like that during her long career. She made her mark as a teenager, practically ruled at Wimbledon, and was still taking home major titles at the age of 49. The name Navratilova will be in the record books for years to come, but for so many of us, all you have to say is Martina. Martina Navratilova is one of the most dominant players to ever swing a racket. Born in the former Czechoslovakia, the former world number one, claimed 18 Grand Slam singles titles, added to her 31 doubles and 10 mixed doubles. 59 major titles are the most by any player, male or female, in the open era. Tennis, presented by Crossroads Turning Points. Hey everybody, Martina Navratilova here to tell you that you picked a great sport to play in high school because it's a sport that you can play your whole life. I mean, look at me. I'm still out there on the court all the time, playing for hours, and I'm like uh, 60, <laughs> never mind. You, know, you can see by my hair how old I am. My hair is thinning, but anyway, I don't know why I did that. Um, Cause you guys can just Google my name and kind of figure out how old I am and then Instagram me about it, whatever. Um, anyway, all the effort that you are putting in now it can pay dividends well past your competitive playing days. Remember, you can love other sports, but tennis is the only sport where love is literally part of the game. Here are the honorees for the Female Tennis Player of the Year. And the finalists are And the Pueblo County Female Player of the Year is... McKenna Lowe owned her steady play and leadership role atop a very strong Pueblo West squad. Lowe was promoted to number one singles for the Talented Cyclones in 2021 and hit the ground running. Lowe began the career with a 5-0 singles record to help lead West to an undefeated start. Congratulations to the Pueblo County Female Tennis Player of the Year. Here are the honorees for the Male Tennis Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Pueblo County Male Tennis Player of the Year is... Christian Guzman of Pueblo Central High School. Christian Guzman had a strong postseason run to close out his prep career. The ever-steady Guzman anchored the number one single spot for Pueblo Central in 2020 and was the top seed in the Class 4A Regional Qualifier. He ran through the bracket to emerge as a breakthrough champion and earned a berth in the state tournament. Congratulations, Christian. Bruce Springsteen once topped the charts with his iconic album, Born to Run. But for this ultra marathon man, those aren't words that you sing. Those are words you live by. Presenting the awards for cross country, Dean Karnazes. Dean Karnazes, the legendary Badwater Ultra Marathon champion, running 135 miles through Death Valley in 124 degree heat. He later ran a marathon at the South Pole. This superhuman and best-selling author has run 50 marathons in 50 states in 50 days. Hey guys, Dean Karnas is here to talk a little cross country. But first, a quick confession. I only ran cross country as a freshman in high school. Our team won the state championships and I figured that I couldn't top that, so I stopped running. Until later in life. Now I've raced and competed on all seven continents. 
But enough about me. This is about you guys, the best cross country runners from across the country. Here are the honorees for the female cross country runner of the year. And the finalists are And the Pueblo County Female Cross Country Runner of the Year is Aspen Fulbright of Pueblo West High School. Aspen Fulbright continued her upward career arc on the course in 2020 after cruising to a victory in the Class 4A Region 5 qualifier where she beat her opposition by more than 30 seconds, the Pueblo West High School Junior placed 12th in the state meet. This earned her a second team All-State nod. With the state championship result as her second straight top 20 finish, she'll look to make it three in a row in 2021. Congratulations, Aspen. Here are the honorees for the male cross-country runner of the year. And the finalists are... And the Pueblo County Male Cross Country Runner of the Year is... Cooper Morris of Pueblo East High School. Pueblo East High School junior Cooper Morris paced the Eagles all season, culminating in the best finish of any Pueblo area runner during the state qualifiers. His time of 18 minutes, 8.95 seconds, was good for a 13th place finish at the Class 4A Region 5 meet. Congratulations, Cooper. Hi, it's Lori Hernandez here. Now don't dismount, stay on your beam because gymnastics awards are right around the bend. A new surge of COVID-19. With all the talk in the news, it's easy to stop listening. But here on the front lines, this virus is incredibly real. So please, wear a mask. Stay six feet apart and wash your hands. Avoid gathering with people outside of your household. Stay connected to your doctor. And don't delay care when you need it. Please, let's have each other's backs. Desmond, yeah. follow me here. Okay. The Four Horsemen. Mm, murderers Row. The Steel Curtain. Broad Street Bullies. Oh, good one. <laughs> Five Slam a Jamma. The Splash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> you did good at that game. Certain groups of athletes stand the test of time, not just for what they did, but for how they did it. Yes, and to present our award in gymnastics, we're honored to have with us a member of another iconic ensemble from that golden quintet of the Rio Olympics. Here's Lori Hernandez. Lori Hernandez, a member of U.S. Women's legendary Final Five gymnastics team, helped bring home team gold and earned a silver medal for herself at the last Summer Olympics. The Jersey Girl is back, competing again on the world stage, and as many know, she also took Dancing with the Stars by storm, finishing as the season 23 champion. Hey, what's up guys? Lori Hernandez here, and I am honored to give some love to gymnasts from coast to coast. This is an Olympic year, so our sport gets some time to shine in prime time. Don't get me wrong, that's a great thing and all, but for you guys, it doesn't matter what year it is. You're in the gym, putting in all the hours on the floor, beam, bars, horse, vault, and the rings, because you all know that perfect routine is out there. And if you love that chase of perfection, then you'll definitely have mad skills in whatever career path you choose. You hear people say, leave it out all on the floor. Well, I'm here to tell you that even if you get a perfect 10, a lot of what you learned in gymnastics comes with you off the mat and into the real world. So congratulations on a great year and let's give out some awards. And the finalists for the Gymnast of the Year are And the Pueblo County Gymnast of the Year is Haley Soares of Pueblo West High School. The sophomore from Pueblo West was the top performer for the Central Co-op team. This season, she finished fourth on the balance beam at the Class 4A State Individual Championships as the team's lone competitor. Congratulations, Haley. 
we have loved seeing how you are celebrating. Thank you for posting and letting us celebrate with you. Keep posting on Instagram and Twitter using the hashtags for a chance to win an autographed gift from one of our featured guests tonight. Now let's hear from some honorees with our friends, Matt and Tyler. Thanks, Abby. One thing you could say about us athletes is some of us tend to be a little superstitious. Some eat the same thing before every game, some listen to the same music, some people even wear the same sock for every game for years. Really? Bro, the <laughs> Sam's Club socks? Come on, the bro. The thick cotton ones? I know, but we had socks from our school. Thank you wouldn't wear them. them, you would stink up the whole place because you wouldn't even wash them. You'd forget to wash them. You still do the same thing in my apartment. In any case, we want to hear from some of the greats. Let's see what they've done to lock in the wins. I, I think I used to have like a ton of rituals. Well, I'm a pitcher, and so we're kind of known for um, being a little different. <laughs> I had my special hair ties. I would have to shower before every competition. I've always had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich before I played. Um, I pretty much just put on my right sock before my left sock, my left shoe before my right shoe. I never touched the lines. I always warmed up 27 minutes before game time. But my one, I guess, like pregame ritual would be that I always pass with one particular teammate, Lauren Moyer. I didn't have any rituals or lucky anything, and I tried to stay away from those things because luck scares me. There are some things in certain playlists that might last an entire season or might uh, you might listen to a certain playlist that you made and lose or have a bad game and that thing gets uh, gets erased pretty quickly. I do do three claps on the blocks typically before I, I start my race. Like if I do something before a workout, before a competition and I notice that I had a good day, I now have to do said thing until the meet is done. Yeah, obviously all rituals are a mental thing, but they were a big part of my preparation. Kind of like Dumbo's feather, like you don't need the feather to fly. You have it within you. 30 minutes before game time, um, yeah, it's embarrassing. Four chocolate chip cookies and an orange Powerade. Well, that certainly was <laughs> educational. Whatever it takes, right? Yeah. And what about you, Desmond? I would think a Heisman Trophy winner would have some good pregame rituals. Did you do anything? Yeah, you know, it's pretty silly and goofy, but I used to put everything on in the same particular order. No matter if we're home or away, like the right sock and the left sock, you know, it's just, I know it's ridiculous. I do it now, even when I put on my suit. So, you, put, so my... you put your suit on in that particular order that you used to put your uniform on today? That's what you did? Absolutely. Well, that's what I like to hear. All right, that was very good. So moving on, let's get to our next set of awards. And now it's time for some very meaningful awards. And this year's Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Rick Mathias, who has been the District 60 Athletics Director for the past 10 years, has been a familiar name in Pueblo. Mathias was enshrined into the Greater Pueblo Sports Association's Hall of Fame in 2018. Mathias was an integral part of bringing out renovations to Dutch Clark Stadium, including installing new turf. He led the way in receiving a grant from the Denver Broncos grassroots community and received a matching grant in 2011. But one of his biggest tasks had an immediate impact on the field. He helped implement a new concussion protocol at South in 2010 and expanded that to the rest of D60 in 2011. A year later, Colorado mandated an improved concussion protocol, putting Pueblo ahead of the game in the safety of its players. Pueblo has been well respected because of Rick's work with the CHSAA on numerous committees, including the Handbook Committee, Classification and League Organization Committee, and two terms as the chairman of the Cross Country Committee. When you're on the track, you know records are made to be broken. And legends can be made in a fraction of a second. That's why you always have to come with your best. You never know when it's your time to make your mark and when the world is watching. And the world definitely watched our next presenter. He remains the only man to win gold in the 200 and 400 at the same Olympics. The one and only legendary sprinter, Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson. This Texan dominated sprinting for most of the 90s. Of his 16 major international medals, not a single one isn't gold. After becoming the first and only man to defend an Olympic 400 meter title in Sydney, and to this day, the US records in the 200, 300, and 400 meters still bear his name. Hey everybody, Michael Johnson here to help celebrate the amazing achievements of the athletes from the friendliest sport there is, track and field. 
I know all those other sports will be mad that I said that, but think about it. When most sports have teams come together to compete, they call it a game. Some call it a match. But when we compete, where do we do it? At a meet. You can't get much more friendly than a meet as far as competition goes. Speaking of which, it's time to meet our honorees. And the finalists are... And the Pueblo County Female Track and Field Athlete of the Year is Leia Martinez of Pueblo East High School. Junior runner Leia Martinez was a hurdle specialist, running her way to numerous impressive victories during South Central League meets, as well as victories in the 100 and 300 meter hurdle races at the 2021 Early Bird. Martinez also racked up wins in the 200 meter dash. Congratulations, Leia. And now for the guys side. Here are your honorees for the Male Track and Field Athlete of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Pueblo County Male Track and Field Athlete of the Year is Ethan Martinez Ratliff of Pueblo Central High School. Pueblo Central High School's rookie runner Ethan Martinez Ratliff burst onto the local sprinting scene. The Central freshman won several South Central League races in the 100 and 200 meter dashes, proving himself to be one of the fastest sprinters in the region. He recorded a time of 11.44 in the 100 against stiff competition to win gold at a SCL meet on May 21st. Congratulations, Ethan. All right, it's time to celebrate those who use a dirty dangle with some tasty sauce to light the lamp. Those guys and gals who put the biscuit in the basket and occasionally chirp their way to the sin bin. The ones who go top shelf on their way to Epic Sellies. We are talking about the coolest athletes on earth. And here to help some talented hockey players raise our version of the cup, we have Hall of Famer Martin St. Louis. Martin St. Louis, a five foot eight native of Canada, defied limitations and battled his way to an amazing career. The first ballot Hall of Famer collected a heart trophy as league MVP, a Stanley Cup, and an Olympic gold medal. His number 26 was the first jersey retired by the Tampa Bay Lightning. Hey guys, it's Marty St. Louis. I can't tell you how honored I am to be part of these high school sports awards because you guys do everything for the love of the game. There's not a lot of glamour in 4 a.m. practices. No one is signing an endorsement deal in the back of a car of stinky equipment. So the fact that you all do that tough stuff day in and day out and season after season, it's a testament to your passion for the game of hockey. You all have my utmost respect and admiration. Well, not all of you because there are a couple who still haven't unpacked those stinky bags from their last game. You know who you are. Come on, guys. Cut your parents a break. Neighbors are starting to complain about the smell. As for the rest of you, great job. I can tell you firsthand that heart and will can take you anywhere. Here are your finalists for the Hockey Player of the Year. And the Pueblo County Hockey Player of the Year is... Ryan King made his presence felt in a big way despite limited action. He joined Pueblo County with just five games to go in the season and poured in more than a dozen goals, immediately establishing himself as a top flight scorer. As a result, the team saw its play elevate to end the season. The 5'10 forward had previously played for the Colorado Springs Tigers, a 16U AAA team where he tallied 16 points and scored three goals in the postseason. Congratulations, a great season. It is called The Beautiful Game. And we're three and a half billion soccer fans, that's right, billion with a B, <laughs> around the world. I think you have a hard time arguing with that description. Just like no one can argue that Alex Morgan is one of the most accomplished players, man or woman, in the history of the U.S. national team and the perfect choice to present our soccer award. When Alex Morgan steps on the pitch, it is game on. With a knack for late game heroics, Morgan's goal in extra time in the semifinals of the London Olympics 
helped propel the U.S. to gold. She would go on to win the World Cup in 2014 and 19. Hey everybody, Alex Morgan here. I've been so fortunate with all the things I've been able to do thanks to soccer. And you might be looking wide-eyed at that list of accomplishments, so it might surprise you to know that in this interaction we are having right now, I'm the envious one. I'm not kidding, because you guys are in or just finished high school, and I absolutely loved my time in high school. It was Dunbar High School in Southern California. Go Brahmas! Our colors were purple and gold, and our cheer was loud and proud. Yeah, that stuff stays with you. I'm envious because high school is special. You guys have your whole life ahead of you, which is scary, but also really exciting at the same time. So congrats on all your accolades and just try to really enjoy the ride. Your older self will thank you, trust me. Here are your honorees for the Female Soccer Player of the Year. And the finalists are And the Pueblo County Female Soccer Player of the Year is Allie Jones of Pueblo Centennial High School. Pueblo Centennial High School's Allie Jones had another productive season leading a talent-laden Bulldog squad. The senior striker, who had 19 goals as a sophomore two years ago, had already racked up double-digit scores through only four games in 2021, highlighted by a hat-trick performance to keep Centennial's undefeated start alive. Jones is slated to continue her career next year at Eastern Washington University. Congratulations, Allie. And now for the guys' side. Here are your honorees for the Male Soccer Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Pueblo County Male Soccer Player of the Year is Logan Stanley of Pueblo West High School. Logan Stanley led Pueblo West High School to the South Central League Championship. The top offensive weapon on a talented Cyclones team that went undefeated in league play, Stanley scored seven goals, including the sudden death overtime game winner that sent West to the Class 4A playoffs. The senior was named a first team SCL All-Star. Congratulations, Logan. Hey guys, it's Aaron Rodgers, and I'll be handing off some football awards in just a bit. Maybe I'll be saying your name, so stick around to find out. Excuse me? Hey, how's it going? Can I, uh, can I get you a drink? Uh, no, I'm just up here to order some food. No, please, I, I got this round. Hey, can we get a couple drinks down here? Hey, buddy, can we get some drinks? These guys are slammed today. We'll, we'll make it happen. Yeah, hey, uh, what's your drinking? Can I buy you a drink? Guys, seriously, I'm just trying to order some fries. Hey, man, I, I'm i getting her a drink. No, no. No, I mean, I, like, I, I'm, okay. I'm getting her one Thanks. right now. Oh, there you go, man. Hey, girl, I got you. Wow, thank you. How did you get these so fast? I ordered it through refill. What's refill? It's a new fast and easy way to order your food online. Oh, you can just order it right from the bar. Yep. And I bring it to you. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Oh, you're welcome. Now, Laura, you know they say defense wins championships. I know you won't get any argument about that from our next presenter. But even if you did, I'm pretty sure you'd let him win that argument. Yeah, I'd sure stay out of his way. Also, those people haven't met you. But anyway, <laughs> here to present the Defensive Football Player of the Year is T.J. Watt. T.J. Watt the youngest in an NFL family dynasty, was drafted in the first round by the Steelers in 2017 and became the first rookie to start at linebacker for the black and gold in more than 30 years. He has earned three Pro Bowl selections, led the league in sacks in 2020, and is a two-time Defensive Player of the Year finalist. Football, presented by Pueblo School District 60. Hey everybody, it's TJ Watt, giving some much deserved props to the defenders out there. We all know that the offense is the one everybody likes to talk about and read about during the season. But over the long haul, history looks back kindly on those who defend. 
Think about it. The heroes of the Alamo, they were defenders. The iconic and beloved lawyer Atticus Finch from To Kill a Mockingbird, defender. Even one of the early super popular video games back in the 80s was called, you guessed it, Defender. And how would you describe a talented player on the other side of the ball? You call them offensive, like a bad smell or a horrendous outfit, like that uncle who always jokes weirdly at Christmas. So keep doing what you're doing out there in the field. People may go nuts for the quarterbacks today, but they'll always remember you defenders for years to come. Here are your honorees for the Defensive Football Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Pueblo County Defensive Football Player of the Year is Lucas Moran of Pueblo West High School. Lucas Moran bulked up for his senior year. After hitting the weight room to add 30 pounds for his final season, the productive defensive end anchored the Cyclones defense with 21 tackles and a sack in a shortened four-game season. Moran was named second team Class 4A All-State. Congratulations, Lucas. A big thanks to TJ Watt for helping us out with the defense. And before we move on to offense, I was thinking, you know, Desmond, if I could get you, mm -hmm. TJ, and our next presenter on my flag football team, yeah. I could go ahead and just plan the victory dinner before the season even started. Oh, that's true. That's true. Oh, man, I love to run routes for this guy. His accuracy and creativity as a signal caller make him a receiver's dream. So more on my flag football team later, but he is one of the best and has certainly carved out a place for his name in the record books. Here to present is legendary quarterback Aaron Rodgers. Super Bowl champion Aaron Rodgers holds the league's lowest career interception percentage and the highest single season passer rating in history. The nine-time Pro Bowl selection was also named the NFL's most valuable player last season, the third MVP trophy of his illustrious career. Football, presented by Pueblo School District 60. Hey everybody, Aaron Rodgers here to hand out some awards to incredibly deserving high school football players. Of course that got me thinking about all the things I love about our sport. You know, one of the most underrated aspects of football, the terminology. I mean, we got the blitz, the bomb, the sack, wild card. We spike, we trap, we fly, we Hail Mary from time to time, those are fun. No offense to other sports, but while they dribble or bunt, we hit the hole and shoot the gap. They can't stand tall with a Statue of Liberty or transform a turnover into a touchdown with the fumble ruski. So what do you say, we get in victory formation as we salute some amazing athletes from the gridiron. Here are the honorees for the Offensive Football Player of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Pueblo County Offensive Football Player of the Year is... George... Longoria of Pueblo South High School. George Longoria made the most of a shortened season. The senior running back, who was one of the most used rushers in the state averaging more than 30 carries per game, put Pueblo South on his back in 2020. In just five games, he amassed nearly 1,000 yards and 13 touchdowns as the Colts advanced to the Class 3A tournament semifinals. Congrats, George. Imagine for a moment what it would be like to go through your day carrying around something that weighs the same as you do. Now imagine that weight isn't playing nice and is fighting you the whole time. It would get pretty exhausting pretty fast. Welcome to the life of a wrestler. Here to help us award these masters of the mat is freestyle Olympic champion, Kyle Snyder. Kyle Snyder, AKA Captain America in 2016 became the youngest Olympic gold medalist and world champion in American wrestling history. He helped Team USA win its first world championship in more than 20 years. He'll be repping the red, white, and blue again when he attempts to defend his freestyle Olympic gold in Tokyo. Wrestling, presented by Global Ed Solutions. 
Hey everybody, Kyle Snyder here. If you want to have a long and successful wrestling career, you have to embrace a concept that is foreign to most Americans. I'm talking about kilograms. That measure of weight that school children and the rest of the world use with ease, but adults in the U.S. can't seem to wrap their heads around. So if you already have a handle on it, you're ahead of the game. It's kind of like learning the language of your opponents. Here are your finalists for the Female Wrestler of the Year. And the Pueblo County Female Wrestler of the Year is Jemima Miranda of Dolores Huerta Preparatory. Jemima Miranda made history as Dolores Huerta Preparatory's first ever state championship qualifier. Miranda, who had previously wrestled co-ed in the boys' CHSAA tournament, placed fifth in the 136-pound division of the newly sanctioned girls' bracket. She placed third in the regional qualifier. Miranda posted a 19-6 mark for the season and will look to make a return trip to states next year. Congratulations, Jemima. And now for the guys. Here are your honorees for the Male Wrestler of the Year. And the finalists are... And the Pueblo County Male Wrestler of the Year is Eric Grego of Pueblo County High School. Pueblo County High School's Eric Griego capped his career with the individual title. He long sought on the mat. After a disappointing third place finish in the Class 4A state tournament a year ago, Griego rebounded to claim the 120 pound championship as a senior with a second period pin, which tied the Hornet school record for 85 in a career. Griego will continue his wrestling career on the collegiate level close to home for Colorado State University, Pueblo. Congratulations, Eric. A lot of today's sports come from purely recreational origins, not lacrosse. Created by Native American tribes, what we call lacrosse was used to train warriors and even has some religious significance. Today's popularity is absolutely exploding, thanks in no small part to our next presenter, lacrosse legend, Paul Rabel. Paul Rabel, the lacrosse superstar and legend, has seven championship titles through his college, professional, and international career. The three-time MVP co-founded the Premier Lacrosse League, changing the game of pro play for the fastest growing team sport in North America. What's up all you lacrosse players out there? I'm Paul Rabel and I've seen a bunch of your highlights and was blown away. You guys totally do your talking on the field, which is where you want a lacrosse player to do their talking, which got me thinking, why am I talking here instead of giving awards to you guys over there? So let's do this. Here are your finalists for the Female Lacrosse Player of the Year. And the Pueblo County Female Lacrosse Player of the Year is Morgan Avila. Pueblo West rookie star in the making, Morgan Avila, shows why the Cyclones will be in good hands over the next few years. The freshman attack was dominant offensively for a West team that began Class 4 South League play with an unblemished record. Through four games, Avila had already amassed 18 goals and 21 points for the Cyclones. Congratulations, Morgan. And now, for the guys. Here are your finalists for the Male Lacrosse Player of the Year. And the Pueblo County Male Lacrosse Player of the Year is Marcus Abeda. Marcus Abeda takes home the award for Pueblo County's top boys lacrosse player in 2021. The senior, who was also a South Central League first team all-star in football, began the season leading the Cyclones in several categories, including points, goals, assists, and shots on goal. Congratulations, Marcus. Hello, my name's Ed Smith and I serve as the superintendent of Pueblo School District number 70. 
High school athletics are an important part of our community. The lessons that they teach are invaluable. School District 70 also recognizes the important lessons taught in our classroom as well. And we're proud of all our student athletes for their success both on the playing field and on the academic stage. Sorry. District 70 is proud to have the opportunity to recognize and celebrate you, the young men and women across Pueblo County area, who have contributed so much of their time and talent to high school athletics. You have most certainly earned the awards being announced this evening, and School District 70 is proud to honor your achievements. Mascots keep us entertained and inspired. The best ones are a symbol of unity, pride, and have fans of their own. Let's see who takes home the award as best mascot fan favorite. The Pueblo County School District 70 Best Mascot Fan Favorite Award. Here are your finalists. And the winner is... Stormy is always showing up to every sporting event that is held at Pueblo West. Stormy is the best at hyping up the student sections, getting involved in the cheers, and is willing to take picture after picture with future Cyclones. Congratulations. Great job. We all have that person we look to for inspiration that drives us to be better, that in turn helps us become an example for somebody else. And the cycle keeps repeating. Let's take a moment to hear about some of the people who've inspired athletes at every level. Hey guys, we're back. So let's talk about role models. Being that person who inspires others is what it's all about. It's one of the main reasons why we started ABC Food Tours, to share experiences, become mentors, and help kids in our communities. I mean, it's one of my favorite things we do. Give back to the kids, have fun with them, learn from them, teach them a little bit, nothing better. Yeah, it's, it's been super rewarding, you know, it's a lot of the lessons that I thought that I'd be teaching these kids is what I've learned from, learn from them. Learn from them, yeah. So mentoring, you learn a lot by giving, but you also learn a lot by receiving. Exactly. Even the pros have role models. Let's hear who inspired them and who they looked up to. My role model was Lisa Fernandez. Her standard of excellence was so high. Peekaboo Street was mine, and without her, you know, I don't know if I would be where I am, so I'm very, very grateful to her. My role model is Alex Morgan. My parents inspire me because they raised three strong daughters. My role model growing up was Cal Ripken. He was the all-round player. He was the Rookie of the Year. He was an MVP. He was a world champion. All things that I wanted to accomplish in my career. My fiance Megan is also a little bit of my role model. Um, just to see how she carries herself. I have a front row seat to it. I tried to change it to a real model. I look up to people who are authentic. You know, I always tell kids it's good to admire somebody. If you like what they do, steal it. My role model are my parents and siblings. My role model is my father. Both of my parents, going back from day one, driving us all around, both of my brothers and I. My older brother was a great athlete, and uh, I was always chasing after him. I think the memory of my mom, uh, because she was always so kind and, uh, and so smart. The military. Um, and their effect they had on me and my rehab. You hope that as an athlete you can have a positive impact on the community and there's ways you do it vocally, through social media today, and most importantly through action in the communities. And so to potentially be that for somebody else uh, obviously is an amazing feeling. Softball might be the most misnamed sport there is. First off, the ball isn't soft at all. Just ask anyone who's ever been hit by one. Secondly, pitchers routinely hurl it over 70 miles an hour, standing only 43 feet from home plate. So don't confuse softball for being soft. To present our next set of awards, here's legendary pitcher Jenny Finch. An icon of the diamond, Jenny Finch caught the nation's attention pitching the University of Arizona to a national championship in 2001. Three years later, she was on the world stage, helping lead Team USA to the gold medal at the Athens Olympics. She would later collect a silver medal in Beijing and go on to boast an outstanding pro career on her way to the National Softball Hall of Fame. Hey everybody, Jenny Finch here with a question for all you softball players out there. Why can't they make a great sports movie about women's softball? Is it really that hard? I mean, our smaller sphered cousin baseball has tons of them. 
Sure, there is that comedy all-stars, but that's really more about the parents than it is about the players. Even a league of their own is about women's baseball, where there is no crying, not softball. It makes no sense. Our sport provides plenty of drama. I don't know about you, but I've met some unforgettable characters in and around the diamond. And you have a built-in audience dying to see their sport up on the silver screen. So for any of you softball players out there with a mile-wide creative streak, start gathering some fun stories, start putting together some characters, and getting them down on paper. And let's see if we can make a movie about the greatest sport in the world, softball. And while we wait for that, let's give out some awards. Here are your honorees for the Softball Player of the Year. And the finalists are And the Pueblo County Softball Player of the Year is Savannah Ottoby of Pueblo Central High School. Savannah Ottoby pitched Pueblo Central to the Class 4A playoffs. The junior was the heart and soul in the circle for the Wildcats, leading the team with 10 wins and a 2.13 ERA. She also led the Wildcats to their first South Central League softball title since 2009. Ottoby will be expected to guide Central back to the postseason next year. Congratulations, Savannah. In 1936, Major League Baseball became the first professional sport in North America to establish a Hall of Fame as a way to remember the grace of the game from every generation. Induction to the Hall is seen as the highest honor of an extraordinary player's remarkable career. To present our baseball awards is first ballot Hall of Famer Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones was selected by the Atlanta Braves as the number one overall pick in 1990 and went on to become a mainstay in a Braves dynasty that claimed 11 consecutive division crowns and a World Series title. He captured two Silver Slugger awards and was the National League MVP in 1999. Hey everybody, can't tell you how proud I am to be a part of this presentation to all you hardworking baseball players out there. I also want to say how impressed I am at all the stats you guys use these days. Y'all have a measure for everything. When I was playing, we didn't talk much about range factors or wins above replacement or bequeath runner scored. Heck, we didn't even know what bequeath was. The only time we ever talked about launch angle was if we happened to see the space shuttle taking off. And exit velocity was how fast the fans left after big locks. But by embracing all the statistical analysis, you're getting new insights into this great game. You're also probably getting a lot better scores on your math tests, so keep up the good work. And don't let your Babbitt affect your Woba, whatever that means. Here are your honorees for the Baseball Player of the Year. And the finalists are And the Pueblo County Baseball Player of the Year is Cole Martino of Pueblo County High School. Pueblo County High School ace and veteran team leader Cole Martino had yet another standout season for the Hornets. The right-handed senior, who was also a Class 4 All-State selection in 2019, has been Pueblo County's go-to pitcher since his freshman season and continued his dominance on the mound in 2021, opening the year with four straight wins and a .68 ERA. Martino is committed to play next year for Washburn College. Congratulations, Cole. Hey, I'm going to have some fun with you. Basketball is awards coming up.
athletes featured tonight will continue their athletic careers in college. But our next presenter's talents were so prodigious that the professional leagues couldn't wait. To hand out our basketball awards, we have the big ticket himself, Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett, dubbed Mr. Basketball USA in 1995, was the first player drafted by the NBA straight out of high school in more than 20 years. This 15-time All-Star earned MVP and Defensive Player of the Year honors and an Olympic gold medal. Here he is, the big ticket himself. Hey, KG here. I know all you girls and guys have worked really hard in high school. I've totally earned all the props and recognition. You're getting it. But no matter how long you play this game, know one thing they will never teach you at any point along the way is how to give out awards. I tell you right now, it's not easy. It's great that our country is a melting pot and we have people from all over. But that also means that the names can be pronounced a million different ways. So be kind to the big ticket, if you will. If I accidentally uh, mispronounce your name or I don't get your name right perfectly, I mean, no disrespect. Uh, I have just seen these winners' names and I'm gonna try my best, okay? So let's get to it. Here are some honorees for the Female Basketball Player of the Year. And the finalists are And the Pueblo County Female Basketball Player of the Year is Jolie Ortiz of Rye High School. Rye High School's Jolie Ortiz led the Thunderbolts to the Class 2A Final Four. Ortiz, a senior leader and point guard, led Rye in scoring and steals as the team won the league crown en route to an appearance in the tournament semifinals. With Ortiz's help over the last three years, Rye went 60-6 and six to become one of the top 2A programs in the state. Congratulations, Jolie. And now for the ballers on the guy side. Here are your honorees for the male basketball player of the year. And the finalists are. And the Pueblo male basketball player of the year is Terrence Austin of Pueblo South High School. Pueblo South star Terrence Austin had a stellar season. The junior guard guided his team to a league title and a run to the Class 4A state tournament Final Four. Austin averaged more than 23 points and nearly four steals per game for a talented Colt squad that went 15-3 and three on the season. For his performance, Austin was voted to the All-South Central League First Team and was named the most valuable player by league coaches. Congratulations, Terrence. Courage means getting up after you've been knocked down. Failure is refusing to get up. Courage is getting up and doing something about it. Courage means being uncomfortable and being okay with that. Be willing to take a chance and maybe go against the flow. To put, put yourself on the line for something. I was always taught that courage means doing the right thing when no one's looking. Courage means stepping out of your comfort zone. Courage means you're fearless. Courage means facing your fears and saying, I'm not scared of you. Courage means doing the right thing all the time, not just when people are watching. Courage can mean that you're just not afraid to make mistakes. Not the absence of fear, but, but I think confronting your fears. One of my favorite quotes is by Mary Ann Radmacher. It says, courage does not always roar. Some days, courage is the little voice that says, I'll try again tomorrow. Courage truly means so many things. Overcoming challenges is the very essence of sports. But there are times when adversity comes after the whistles have blown and the horns have sounded, and it's devastating. The Courage Award is given to an athlete who has faced tremendous hardship and through their strength and tenacity, were able to rise above it. In 2018, a traumatic on-field leg injury threatened to end Alex Smith's professional football career and his life. After 17 surgeries, a lethal infection, and two years of grueling rehab, he stepped back into the huddle to help lead the Washington football team to an improbable playoff berth. 
Here to honor our recipient and present the 2021 Courage Award is a man who is no stranger to hardship himself, 2020 NFL Comeback Player of the Year, Alex Smith. There are a lot of ways to define courage. For me, courage is like beauty. It's in the eye of the beholder. And the grace exhibited by our Courage Award winner is something to behold. Courage can be found overcoming a sudden and traumatic event or conquering a lifelong condition in ways the rest of us can't even imagine. What makes this athlete truly amazing is that they shared their very difficult, very personal story in order to help the next person who has the same brutal hill to climb. They found a way to turn courage into something shared, something inspiring, something beautiful. And the recipient of the Courage Award for Pueblo County is Remington Peterson of Rye High School. High school athletes have injuries. It's an unfortunate part of being an athlete. However, for Rye High School wrestler Remington Peterson, his injury led to something no one could have predicted. But it also led him to overcoming an obstacle he never saw coming. Peterson suffered a torn labrum two years ago during his freshman year, along with his hip socket. However, what that injury produced was something much more than just a simple muscle tear. It was discovered through that injury that Peterson suffered from a condition called hip dysplasia. What did that mean? Well, according to the doctors, it meant that Peterson would never wrestle again. To Peterson, that wasn't an option. From there, his rehab began. It began with two surgeries as his hip was broken into three different places. Doctors called his hip the worst they had ever seen. Five months after his surgery, the rehab began. And it wasn't just physical rehab, but mental rehab as well. However, through determination and support from friends, family, and coaches, two years later, Peterson was able to return to the mat, and he just didn't come back, he impressed. In a comeback that is fitting for the movies, Peterson won the 108-pound state title. Congratulations, Remington. Amazing grit, impressive comeback. Hey, high school sports fans, it's the Big Aristotle here to present some of the biggest awards of the night. So stick around, I've been preparing all week. I really hope I make Miss Swan proud. That's my fourth grade teacher. Definitely don't want to end up in detention again. outstanding individual achievements in all different sports from this past school year. But now we focus on the heart of high school athletics, yeah. the team. And a crucial ingredient for success at any level, the coach. Mm -hmm. And to present our awards for the best team and best coach, please welcome someone who is no stranger to success, legendary coach Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer has found success at every stop of his coaching career, including three national championships. He's the winner of multiple National Coach of the Year awards, and this fall, he'll make his NFL debut as head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hi guys, we know that good coaches and teams of this world are judged by the wins and losses. But we all know that there's a lot more behind the scenes. Strategy, teaching, training, and a lot of pushing. But a coach excels when his or her team truly comes together as one. And you know it doesn't matter what sport you play, there really is nothing like being part of an exceptional team. It's never easy, of course. Nothing worthwhile ever is. The hours and hours of practice, the growth of a unit, going through all the ups and downs, the highs and lows of a season together. When you become a great team, a special bond forms between the players, the coaches, and the support staff. That's like nothing else I've ever felt. 
Yes, there's some magic needed to make great coaches and great teams, but don't take this old coach's word for it. Let's hear from some athletes who know a thing or two about winning. A good teammate accepts you as you are, yet challenges you to become even better because they see the best in you. A good teammate is someone who wants the same amount of success for you as they do themselves. A good teammate is unselfish. Somebody who always um, stays positive. The way you grow, uh, the way your game grows, the way your IQ grows, uh, a lot of times is, is off the basis of how your coach a good coach is consistent. A good coach is someone that can motivate you to do things that your mind doesn't even think you can do. Good coaches understand that their role is not just to, to coach, but to teach, to inspire, and motivate an athlete. Okay guys, they really did say it best, but now let's give out some awards to some who've proven they know what it takes to come together as a team and bring home the wins. Here are your finalists for the team of the year. And the Pueblo County Team of the Year is Rye High School Girls Basketball. Led by a trio of standout All-State selections, the Rye High School Girls Basketball Team takes home the award for Pueblo County's Team of the Year thanks to a deep postseason appearance in the Class 2A Final Four. The 2021 campaign was the most recent in a run of impressive performances by the Thunderbolts, who finished the year with a 15-2 record and lost just six games over the past three seasons. Congratulations, ladies. Very impressive season. Now for the Coach of the Year, and the finalists are... And the Pueblo County Coach of the Year is Shannon Lane of Pueblo South High School. Pueblo South High School boys basketball coach Shannon Lane, who according to the CHSAA is just the 10th woman in state history to coach a boys high school program, stewarded a dramatic turnaround performance for South in her first season by leading the team to a Class 4A Final Four appearance a year after the Colts won just four games. Though Lane's job title changed, her success on the court should come as no surprise. From 2008 to 2019, she served as the head coach for the school's girls basketball program, amassing nearly 250 wins to go with five league titles and four state championship game appearances. Congratulations, coach. Excellent job. Female Athlete of the Year, presented by St. Mary Corwin Hospital at Centura Health. Hello, my name is Mike Cafasso and I serve as the CEO of St. Mary Corwin Hospital at Centura Health. High school sports is such an important part of our community. The lessons that it teaches are invaluable. At Centura Health, we are vibrant caregivers serving thriving communities, real people partnering with real people. Our healthcare workers live, play, and serve in this community. We are passionate about the pursuit of whole person care in body, mind, and spirit. We are committed to supporting, celebrating, and elevating the health and vibrancy of the communities that we serve. I'm so glad we have this opportunity to recognize and celebrate you, the young men and women across Pueblo area who have contributed so much of their time and talent to high school athletics. You have most certainly earned the awards being announced this evening at Centura Health. St. Mary Corwin is proud to honor your achievements. All right, guys, the moment we have all been waiting for. It's time to reveal the top male and female athletes of the year. Yes. These are exemplary athletes who have stolen the spotlight, dominated the season, and shown what it means to be unstoppable. To give us a helping hand with the female athlete of the year is the all-time assist leader in WNBA history, the great Sue Bird. Sue Bird has been a basketball superstar for more than 25 years. She earned the Naismith College Player of the Year and a three-time Nancy Lieberman Award winner. Bird was the number one pick of the 2002 WNBA Draft, an 11-time All-Star, two NCAA championships, four WNBA crowns, four Olympic gold medals, four FIBA World Cup titles, plus a dozen or so International League titles. Hey everybody, Sue Bird here. We've arrived at my favorite part of the show. 
Female Athlete of the Year brings together the best of the best, all in one award. It's kind of like that scene in Endgame when all the female heroes assemble, only instead of lasers, swords, and tricked out suits, you gals have sports equipment, but you get the idea. The point is you have all excelled in your individual sports. You have all overcome obstacles standing between you and success. And you all have earned our lasting admirations. So really, there is no downside here. Just one of you gets a little bit more of an upside. But you all leave tonight winners. All right, let's meet our finalists for Female Athlete of the Year. Kate Gallery, a junior from Pueblo West High School. Joe Lee Ortiz, a senior from Rye High School. And Shayla Padilla, a senior from Pueblo West High School. And the Pueblo County Female Athlete of the Year is Jolie Ortiz of Rye High School. Rye High School's Jolie Ortiz is the top female athlete in the area after making her mark in not just one, but two sports this season. On the basketball court, she led the Thunderbolts to the Class 2A Final Four to cap a supremely successful career. Ortiz, a senior leader and point guard, led Rye in scoring and steals as the team won the league crown en route to a semifinals tournament appearance. With Ortiz's help, Congratulations, Jolie. Now let's meet the contenders for Male Athlete of the Year. With so much incredible talent on display, we needed somebody of equal stature. So our final presenter of the night needs no introduction. Yeah, but we're gonna give him one anyway, because if we don't, I know he'll call us out and he'll say, Hey, there's uh, Rutledge, why, why did you throw the Jesus some love? Wow. So here to present our final award of the night, the one and only Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal, the big Aristotle himself, is feared by opponents and loved by millions. Shaq's combination of size, speed, and strength led to four NBA championship rings, an MVP title, 15 All-Star Game appearances, an Olympic gold medal, and a first ballot invite to the Hall of Fame. Male Athlete of the Year, presented by St. Mary Corwin Hospital at Centura Health. What's up, everybody? Diesel in the house, represent for all the major athletes out there in high school. It's time to give out the Best Male Athlete Award. Anytime somebody wants to put the word best next to your name, that is a major sign of respect. It means they know you do hard work to be great, but also you pay attention to detail. It means you rise to the occasion when your team really needs it. It means you make your parents proud. So let's give it up for the male athletes who are vying for the title of the best. And the finalists for the male athlete of the year are... Terrence Austin, a junior from Pueblo South High School. Luke Guaranty, a senior from Pueblo South High School and Cole Martino, a senior from Pueblo County High School. And the Pueblo County Male Athlete of the Year is Luke Gariente of Pueblo South High School. Luke was named as an honoree for Baseball Player of the Year, was a finalist as the Defensive Football Player of the Year, and a finalist for Male Hockey Player of the Year. And now, he is the winner of the Pueblo County Male Athlete of the Year. Once on the ice, he was an offensive leader for the Hornet squad that improved as the season went on. On the football field, he was an All-State selection and a two-way player. After graduation, Guaranty will continue his athletic career on the collegiate level with the Colorado State University Pueblo football team. Congratulations, Lukey. What a great night. We have had so much fun celebrating your accomplishments. And we want to thank all the parents, guardians, teachers, and role models who have helped these amazing young adults get to where they are today. You're all so important. Exactly. And to all the athletes, coaches, and winners, congratulations. Yes. Until next year, that's a wrap. Yes. <laughs> advice I'd give to my high school self would be don't sweat the small stuff. I would tell my high school self to take time and enjoy the little things. High school flies by and before you know it you will be an adult. <laughs> so have fun and enjoy the time with your friends and family. Well there's a couple things. I think one, 
would to tell myself to be yourself. And a lot of times that's a lot easier said than done, but I know looking back, I was like every other high school kid, trying to figure things out, you know, seeing what your friends are doing, seeing what your family's doing, trying to see where you fit in. And I think a lot of times um, as kids, you know, we don't have the confidence to just be who we are. Only surround yourself with people that you respect, that you love, that love you back, that support you. You've got to have positive enforcement in every way around you. Continue to be a leader and not a follower. Continue to do right things in the community, in schools, uh, around other student athletes. It's supposed to be fun. Work hard, put everything into it, but make sure that you have joy when you compete. It's not about the outcome, it's about competing with all of your heart for something that you love. The outcome, the results will take care of themselves if you do that. So make sure you have fun, have fun with your team, rejoice in each other, rejoice in your talent, and just go for it. I think I would tell her first and foremost to enjoy the process and have fun and stay present in the moment. Um, and then I would say to challenge herself and to kind of run towards her fears and get uncomfortable. I think that that's where um, people learn and grow the most is making mistakes, um, taking advantage of the mistakes as an opportunity and learning from them. My advice would be make the most of your high school experience. How you do that, it's about people, it's about relationships. Be yourself and be a leader before being anything.